So then I said, piercings? More like pissings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we laughed and laughed. And we all drank lemonade. The end. Ooh. See, because pier piercings is like this. And I said, pissings. Like, see, because it's like pissings instead of piercings. It's funny. It's a play on words. A double entendre. Um, I'm not sure it is a double entendre. Uh, because that would be like the same word as two meanings rather than a... It's a play on words. Hi! Welcome to the thing. Suck my toes. Ah, didn't know I was going to say that, did you? Pow, pow! You never know what I'm going to do next. A uh, hi! How are you? Hope you're all bloody well. Ooh, that's what counts. As long as you're well in these times of strife. Ooh, blah, blah. Um, the so I'm drawing, and that's the show. I'm drawing. Uh, I'm drawing like you know the the lo-fi the the drawing of the girl like the anime girl at the window sat at her desk doing like homework or whatever and it's like lo-fi hip-hop beats to study study and relax to that's it hip-hop lo-fi hip-hop lo-fi beats to hip-hop lo-fi study and relax lo-fi hip-hop to hip-hop hop hip-hop low lo-fi relax your lo-fi hip-hop beats to study and relax your hip hop beats too. Lo fi hip hop beats to study and relax to. Lo fi hip hop beats to study and relax to. I've got no clue what I'm doing. So clearly, I'm being bloody hilarious and drawing my own version of that. But it's going to be like lo fi hip hop beats to murder and write your suicide note to or so something funny like that oh you know me go oh, good to make things dark oh got a pretty dark sense of humor have you yes i saw something online what was it it was like oh i've got a dark sense of humor but this is too much and it was like um why why don't it was chinese kids why don't chinese kids believe in santa claus because they are making the presents which is you know funny 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 but at the same time probably kind of true um but the, the person's comment being like oh i've got a dark sense of humor but this is a bit much and it's like what that's not it's not even dark dark is like to do with you know not just death you know it could be death could be rape <laughs> uh child abuse you know those fun things but i don't know if child slave i guess child slave labor is child abuse and can come under the, the dark humor heading but it's just like for one thing i say hoo hoo dark humor as a as a joke i, I don't actually give a shit about having a dark sense of humor. it's whatever so just saying that is dumb enough but then when you to say oh I've got a dark sense of humor, but this is too much like, that's nothing, kids. That's not dark. Dark is murder-suicide. Lo-fi hip-hop beats to murder-suicide too. Yay! That's what we want to do. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Ooh. A beep boop, steel do and a boo. And how about you? Do do do. Lo-fi beats to hip hop and study slash relax to. Lo-fi relaxing beats to study and hip hop to. Lo-fi hip hop relaxation to study and beat to. 
lo-fi hip-hop studying to relax your beats to lo-fi hip-hop relaxation to beat your studies to lo-fi hip-hop beats to beat your meat to beat to beat your beats to beat beat on the beach kids on the street kids on the beat beat kids beat kids so that's funny that's from a show called wonder shows and if you've not seen it i suggest you look it up they had a segment called beat kids because it was like kids being news reporters out on the street but so they were like on the beat so it was called kids on the beat but like beat kids and then the logo was like two fists and it said beat kids beat kids so it's like a a noun but also a verb yeah it's funny oh it's funny 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 things so this is the ewan character at the desk writing the suicide note and this is a girl he's got tied up she's looking worried looking at him like oh my god what are you doing she's crying and shit oh boo duct tape on her mouth as she is wont to do um so she's gonna die probably all available evidence would suggest she's gonna fucking die no real loss she's a conservative fuck her give a shit she she votes against abortions so fuck that bitch um that's my stance by the way is, is i i'm not just pro-abortion but i think they should be mandatory for everybody <laughs> kill babies the um speaking of piss obviously i it was only a sort of a brief mention but pissings um you may recollect i'm sure you're all avid viewers you watch every week watch and listen while you're doing your own dr- are you sitting watching right now got this open on your on your computer screen while you're drawing i'm gonna post a screenshot saying oh, i like listening to you and when i'm drawing and that's good i am very glad people do that it's, it's very good of you to do so but if you are hello hi i'm speaking directly to you now you cunt. <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. We're just all good friends here. Having a laugh. I call you a cunt. You, I don't know. Cry, whatever. <laughs> I only say that because that's what I do. Um, so I'm sure you would have listened to last week's when I was speaking about, um, I've spoken about it a few times, but I was talking about Simpsons Porn. And the drawing thereof, um, how I used to draw a lot of Simpsons porn. I had a, a, a memory came to me. I think it was while I was having a wee after doing the podcast last week, um, which was, so there was a lot of like Simpsons porn comics, but like really, really badly drawn. Um, like they'd be, I don't know, Bart would look like this this is almost like better than than how they were drawn um their arms be like this and then the, you know it'd be bart with like a bone oh and the penis is always like drawn like this like i could never like, if I'm going to jerk off to cartoon porn, it has to be drawn well. It has to look good. And this, and, like, this is orange. And I was just like, that's, I mean, that's kind of the shape of it. I get it. Like, the, but I can't fucking come to this. What's going on? Um, so they were really shitty drawn. There was, there was a lot of them like that. That's now in my sketchbook. That's cool. Um... So I, I I saw them and, you know, occasionally I'd peruse them, but never in like a more of just curiosity as opposed to being turned on by it or whatever. Um, and the the s- stories, 
quote unquote in these comics were always sort of pretty out there, pretty ridiculous. It was usually just like Simpsons incest porn and stuff. But there was one particular one, and I think this particular image became a meme for a while, um, which was Lisa was on the toilet and then Bart barged in to the bathroom while Lisa was on the toilet. And then I, th I guess he fucked her. <laughs> like that was that was what it amounted to. Um, it probably counted as rape, I don't know. But they were obviously written by someone... Well, not obviously, but probably written by someone not natively an English speaker. So the language was always a little bit off. Um, so <laughs> Bart barges into the bathroom and then Lisa sat on the toilet going, Bart, don't come in. I am piss. <laughs> I don't remember any of the other dialogue, but it was that. <laughs> Uh, Lisa sat on the toilet having a wee and then Bart barges in and Lisa goes, Bart, don't come in. I am piss. Uh, that made me laugh. I'll, I'll remember that every now and again as I'm having a wee and I'll just say to myself, I am piss. Don't come in. I am piss. Um, and then, yeah, they... Oh, I say they fucked. I, know, I think Bart fucked her. I don't know how into it she was. I don't know if consent is necessary when they're cartoons. I don't know. Whatever. Um, my teenage years. Well spent, obviously. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I just... Yeah. Oh, let's take a look at an art book. Oh, this is... Glenn Fabry, sketchbook one. It's like a book of sketches of Glenn Fabry. Glenn, Glenda Fabrington. Glendosio Fabrino. Glean, glean the Fabry machine. Um, I think I've shown this briefly. I would have shown it in the video I made about Glenn Fabry. Glenn Fabry is my go-to favorite artist. Um, responsible for sort of how I paint and approach certain things. And I have this book of his. It's a nice little little book. He sells them at his cons and stuff. Uh, well, at cons when not his, his, his conventions specifically. Conventions that he's at. Um, but I thought we'd just have a little look through it because it's, it's good. And it's more recent work of his. It's, you know, a lot of the stuff I show is from the 90s, like early to mid 90s, where this is sort of mid 2000s to early 2010 sort of years, 2013, 2007, those kinds, of, you get it. Um, so there's some just stuff like this, which is it's cool. I don't know exactly what it is, what it's for, but it's fucking good. Um, there's some colour stuff, but largely black and white because it is mostly sketches. Um, Jesse Custer from Preacher. I'm sure you're all very aware of the guy reading a Spider-Man on a train comic. I like that. Um, stuff like this is why I love artists like Glenn Fabry. Um, a lot of comic book artists do it. They have a good sense of humour and they put silly little things like this in their drawings. Um, some of them don't, but some of them do. More Jesse. And I like that this book does have, like, that's obviously quite a rough kind of sketch. Um, still good, obviously. But then there's also more, more well-rendered pieces in there also, like this. That's quite a good one. I think a lot of these are, like, probably commissions may be done at conventions so like quick sort of half hour to an hour sketches done for like i don't know 10 15 pound or whatever just probably this is roughly actual size as well more jesse oh happy birthday no oh, 2012 it's cool to see how his style of more recent years has gotten really, really like a lot cleaner and more refined. It's still obviously Glenn Fabry's work, if you know Glenn Fabry's work, but it's a lot, lot cleaner, uh, a lot more look curvy as well. There's all these curvy lines where he didn't used to do those a lot. Um, that's cool, like a zombie. A, gold panning 
Old West zombie. Saint of Killers. One of the coolest comic book characters. It's really fine good. The chick. Hi, Dave. Ooh, lucky Dave. <laughs> um, I, I'm aware... That's cool. If I can, is it Chitara or whatever from Thundercats? Nips. Uh, a copy of, well, as it says, after Jay Hewlett's Get Knotted Tank Girl cover 1990. So that was originally drawn by Jamie Hewlett in that stance, exactly. But that's a Glenn Fabry version, which is quite cool. I like that. Obviously, I like that. What am I fucking saying? Um, but yeah, I'm aware Glenn Fabry of recent years had some health issues, maybe something to do with cancer, maybe of the lungs. I don't know the details, but I've not seen or heard anything of him recently. So I'm, I'm a little bit like, I don't know if he's doing great or if he's, I don't, like, I don't know. I, there's not been any news come out about him. And he's not like one of like the big, big name artists. So it's not like, you know, if Ryan Otley or Scotty Young or someone, one of the current like big Marvel stars died or had serious complications from cancer or whatever, people would, you know, they'd be speaking about it, especially since those sorts of people, they're very active on social media. So I'm sure some sort of news would come out. But Glenn Fabry very much was not and his instagram that he did have i think is basically gone if not deleted then basically erased everything's gone from it the last i checked um i think so i'm a little bit like worried in that respect um that's cool a couple of people looking at his drawings and they're all like dicks and fannies and mickey mouse blowing a penis Judge Dread, we love some Dread. I've got a similar drawing to that by the man Glenn Fabry. It's very cool. Um, ooh, that's cool. Judge Dread and Judge Death. A little bit eh, with the the badge getting lost under the shoulder pad. Don't know quite what happened there, but Judge Dread's got such an awkward fucking costume to draw. So uh, this shit bugs the hell out of me anyway. Batman and Dread. Um, and this is one thing I love Glenn Fabry's work. I will never ever say anything bad about it, but I think this is where it's at a loss for certain superhero comics. Stuff like Preacher works perfectly because it's just people doing shit. When it comes to like Batman and stuff, you see, you know, Frank Miller, Jim Lee, those people do Batman and he's like massive, muscly, bulky. And then Glenn Fabry's Batman looks a lot more sort of like Adam West, average, everyday guy, blue-collar, work-a-day Batman, which isn't bad because it's still good, but it's just in comparison to, you know, the wild, crazy, dynamic, you know, even Bisley Batman. It looks really, really toned down um, in comparison. That's a really cool, like, little process before and after. I, I assume that was a commission of a portrait of somebody, which is a really cool one, like the lizard. The background's really nice as well. Um, yeah, I, I, if anyone knows anything of how Glenn Fabry's doing currently, please do let me know. Um, I haven't researched it a lot, but I'm aware he had some issues and I've heard nothing from him. So I'm, I'm leaning towards, you know, worst case scenario, but, uh, it would be a shame if he had left us. Um, but then maybe all this shit would be worth a lot more money now. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Love that. Um, 2011. It was recent at the time, because I got this in like 2013, I think. Um, so at the time, that was recent. But now, that's almost 10 years ago. So not so recent, I guess. Mm. Do love a Hulk, though. I might try to get that blown up. Print it off. For my own use, of course, not to sell it, just to hang on my wall or something. Or I could just tear the page out and frame it. But I probably won't. And that's really, really cool as well. I love that. Hunchback. All the skin. Like all the fucking little blobs and wrinkles and creases and shit. That's what Glenn Vaby's really, really good at. All that shit. 
<laughs> Howard the Duck. Uh, little Spider-Man, little chibi Spider-Man. And uh, not so chibi Spider-Man, and Sinister Six. We like that. Again, almost like all the proportions and stuff are too realistic. And then like for something like this, it feels like they should be more dynamic and crazy and wild. But it's a little bit too like... Like, it's a great painting. If I could paint that, I'd be more than happy. But I don't know. I guess that's good as a painting. But if that was a comic book cover, you'd want it to have a bit more sort of like crazy impact, I guess. No. My two cents for what it isn't worth. That's cool. Again, Superman looking a little bit... He's obviously ridiculously muscly. But he looks quite small, especially in comparison to the armoured... Batman. A really nice preacher piece. Saint in the background. I love how that's painted because you can see all the underpainting, like the orangey brown underneath, with just a couple of layers of paint pulling out the skin tones and stuff. And then those are really cool. But they do, I think, if you know... I could show a contrast, but I won't... Um, if you know his style, you know th these paintings look loads like cleaner and smoother than the ones he did for like the covers of Preacher and stuff. That's really nice. A little bit gay. <laughs> Two people kissing, having a snog. Um, but in terms of painting, that's really fucking nice as a painting. It's cute, all the purple sort of glow there under, under lighting or whatever. Really cool. And that's cool too. The Saint. I've just been, um, I've been replaying Red Dead Redemption, the first one, and I rewatched uh, Deadwood, the series and the movie, which is, mm, uh, so old Western stuff is currently in my head and I may do something with that. So seeing the preach of, pre pre preach, preach, priest, preacher, saint, the saint of killers, the priest of killers, stupid. The saint of killers is very sort of like, oh yeah, old west sort of guns and shit. We like, we like that. Um, he did a bunch of covers for a series of comics. It might have been called Zombies or something else, but it was about zombies. Um, so that's really cool to see. I fucking love zombies. I was going to do a video about zombies, so I might still get to that. Um, so seeing Glenn Fabry do zombies is really really cool. Really, 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 really cool. 2008, quite some time ago, gosh. That's about when I was at uh, college, wow. Fucking wow! More zombies, that's good, man. That's fucking nice. That's real fucking nice. And that's gnarly. Gah. The glow, the rim lighting, really, really makes that pop. It's, it's quite subtle, but like, and just here, it's really good. And all the creases in the world on the jeans. Cool Tarzan. That's really cool uh, for a brewing company in the States. That'd be really cool if you own a brewing company and then you pay Glenn Fabry to do like a logo thing for you like that. That's really, really fucking nice. I like that a lot. We like chimps anyway. So especially when they're very well painted Fabry chimps. And that's the sketch obviously for the for the thing. A little bit of a loss to have them on either side of the same page. Because it would be cool to have like the sketch and the painting or vice versa. It's still cool that you can see it but it's like, you know, you have to keep doing this to uh, another sort of Tarzan, I guess. Or something. Batman! Jokesy joker. Yeah? Oh, so I'm going to just name every character on every page. No, I won't. I can't even... Oh, fuck. Fuck. So, yeah, I assume all of these are like... If not at conventions, then just, hey, I'll give you some money, draw me this character because I like this character or whatever. 
Constantine. I like Constantine. That's cool. I like all the like demons around here and shit. That's really nice. More Constantine. And this is another one of the little like funny details I like. Smokey the Vagabond silk cut optional. <laughs> Just a funny little cigarette boy. Very cool Lobo. I love this as well, just just sketches. Because it, obviously it's sketchbook, but a lot of it is just like, you know, these probably are not done in a sketchbook. Um, but it's cool to see actual, like, sketchbook sketches. Little Hellboys. Funny demon with a dick. <coughs> That's funny. Slaying, chopping a pig. That's cool. So, portrait from the cover. Chimp. Nice little that. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. That's really nice. Nice inking. Kids with guns. Like that gorilla's song. <gasps> Some chick. Some demon chick. <laughs> the lighting's great, man. Textures and stuff in the clothes, and these fucking, I don't know, wispy silk material, the hair and everything. God, God damn, damn him. Oh, the detail in that, all the maggots and shit. Skeletons and weird demons and things. That's cool. I don't know what these are from. There's a note there. Lot 13, number 3, page 8, art by Glenn Fabry. Um, I assume it's like a comic called Lot 13 or something. I don't know. I've not really looked into it. I probably should do that. I should look into these things. Um, but some wicked art. Wicked! That's a current term the kids are using. Bugs and shit. That's really, really nice. I'd love to see that coloured. I don't know if it got coloured. Like I say, I'll have to look into it. Lot 13. Let's research that. That's pretty badass. Very cool. Zombies. More zombies. Zombie, zombie, bombies. Spawn. Cool. In the back. Yeah, man. Glenn Fabry. Hope he's okay. Um, <laughs> so I said pissings. More like piss. Oh, I did it backwards. Shit. Uh... Here's something I'm getting tired of seeing. I still see so many of them. Um, it's so irrelevant and it doesn't matter at all, but it's just it's something that bugs me when I do see it. It's when you see something from like a a show or a film and it said oh this entire scene was completely improvised like they said oh say something about society or whatever and then the actor just improvised this whole like two minute monologue and it was like everyone was like applauding on set they were like wow that was how did you come up with that and he was like i don't know i just sort of went with it and sometimes it's nothing that grand or sometimes it's just like a little funny jokey scene or whatever Sometimes I can believe that, yeah, that might have been improvised, but it's just a small little throwaway thing. But a lot of the times it's like... Film writers and show writers, you know, some of them kind of stink. But for the most part, like, they, they know what they're doing. They write shit to be a certain way. Like The Office, the original Office, the British Office show, loads and loads of that feels improvised because of how naturalistic like the writing and acting is. But then Ricky Gervais, love him or hate him, he has said in interviews that, no, it was all written to, to appear like that. That's the whole point, is it's supposed to feel like natural and improvised, but in a bad way. Um, which it just, it kind of bugs me when everyone says, like, you know, because online you can say anything and people will believe it. You know, quotes by people that never said the thing they were quoted as saying. Um, 
So when they say this thing was completely improvised or this scene was made up and the director was like, wow, yeah, let's go with that. For the most part, I, I very much doubt every single one of those I see because like, it was probably written to be like that and they did a few takes and they were like, okay, yeah, that's cool, that'll work. Let's move on to the next scene or whatever. Like, Because films are written. <laughs> They're very, very, very well written usually. I think as an example, I know for a fact from seeing people make fun of it, the more recent Ghostbusters film with all the, the women in it, um, that had a lot of improvised stuff on purpose. Like that was the intention of like the director, writer, whoever, was to have these amazing comedians mm, um, improvise loads of their lines. And so there's footage of them in the, doing the same scene again and again and again, but improvising different funny lines to go in there. And the result of that is that it all comes out as boring bullshit, especially when you improvise so many different things for the same scene, and then you basically pick the funniest one, funniest one to put in the film. That's what happens when you improvise shit, is you, you end up with just garbage unless it's like a certain way like even um uh curb your enthusiasm the dialogue in that is largely improvised but i know it's written like they have certain points they have to hit if they're you know two characters shouting at each other as they often do in that show there's a few certain points there they've got to make sure they hit they have a general idea of what they're saying but the actual wording of, of it is basically up to them to make up as they'd argue the point. Um, which makes sense because it's all based on, you know, basically real people. So it's like how they'd react in that situation. That's that's the sort of improvisation that, you know, works and I can believe happens. Which is only sort of half improvised because it's largely written to be a certain way. So when you see like, oh, this this whole scene was improvised and it's the, amazing that, that someone could do that, it's like it, it almost certainly wasn't. <laughs> I very, very much doubt the, the fucking whatever scene was improvised. I can't remember the latest one I saw that made me go, fucking fuck this, <laughs> it's not true. Um, nah, trying to remember, but cannot not for the life of me remember which is probably for the best because it probably wasn't even a good film or anything so it's only film uh... oh i can't remember which episode it was but in a recent episode i mentioned a film i was drawing something i was trying to think of the film arrival with the squid aliens in the thing and they go up in the ship and it's like gravity's weird and then they talk with ink circles and it's like oh um and it's like a, a time travel element and save the world and world peace and shit. Arrival was the name of the film. I could not for the life of me remember. Uh, I think in my head I had Annihilation, which is a one word title beginning with A that has to do with aliens in the film. Um, so that was in my head, but I knew it wasn't Annihilation because Annihilation is like a very, very different film. Very good still, but a very, very different film. Um, and so that's a, a thing, a thing. I meant Arrival when I couldn't think of the film I, I was thinking of. That's about as interesting as that gets. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Lo-fi beating hip hops to study while relaxing to Lo-fi relaxing hip hop to study and beat to Lo-fi studious relaxing hip hop to beat your kids to. Lo-fi hip-hop beat your kids while studying and relaxing. For not studying, so you can relax. Lo-fi hip-hop to beat your kids to because they're not studying and then you can relax. Relaxing lo-fi hip-hop 
hot beats to relax and relax to. Lo-fi. Yeah, right. Well, The, uh, <laughs> ah, I got nothing. Um, see, I write down notes because, you know, of, of talking points, things I can bring up. And I've, I've basically used them all up this episode. <laughs> I got nothing else. I got nothing left to talk about. So I talk about me and how I'm doing. I'm struggling, ladies and gents. Um, I'm I'm struggling to get even one piece of artwork finished a week at the moment, which is it's it, for me. I know I can do far, far, far more than that. I can. I should be doing pieces every day. I should have a piece finished, but I'm really struggling to even get one done. Um, one done. That wasn't racist, I promise. Uh, which stinks. Uh, my sleeping's been really shit lately. I, I this last from today, this day Thursday and last night, I was just waking up and falling asleep again and again throughout the entire night and day. Um, I saw the sun come up as I was sort of waking up, and then I went to sleep again, and then sort of woke up and went to sleep a couple more times. And then when I finally was like awake, awake, the sun was just going down. And so now I'm, I'm up doing this. Um, so I'm, I'm, like I say, as I've mentioned, I'm going to therapy. I think part of that is like, it's bringing to mind a lot of things that I'd previously sort of worked to keep out of my mind. So maybe that's part, you know, keeping me up and of keeping my mind in dark places or whatever um but i'm i'm trying you know i'm still so i have I, i'm trying to you know i've still got commissions to do i was trying to get them done if i can get them done like this month november then i should be able to spend most of december relaxing which i think i need so i can like recharge a bit and then come the new year, get Gun Viking issue four done, get that out in a full book. That will do me good. That will that will be a great book, and also that should keep me going, money wise for a little while, um, which will allow me to work on a couple of other things, and then maybe start getting some more commissions done. But I'm having to contact people. I've got commissions in the works for to be like, listen, I'm trying. <laughs> I've I've not forgotten about you. Your commission will get done. It's just going to take me a little bit. Please understand. And for the most part, people are very understanding, so I'm very grateful for that. I've, I've yet to have someone really be angry or annoyed. Um, or at least that I know of. They might feel that way, but they've not told me. So, I mean, that might be for the best. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's me at the moment. Trying to keep going. Um, drawing where I can, trying to get stuff done. Uh, that's a very, very rough drawing of that's the guy piss. Always, always piss. A few little devils. Because someone I, I very much like and admire, love, love and admire. I like using the L word. Um, had drawn a devil, so I was like, oh, I could draw a devil, so I drew a few devils. Um, yeah, so that's a rough for that. Not really much else. Nah, this is all old news. Old news. Um, I mean, you might have seen the, the commissions. Commissions I have gotten done, I'm happy with. Um, I think I've got... This one took a few... A few drawings to get to where I want. It's like a... I don't know, like a programmer or something sitting at a computer with like screens and nerd stuff. That's a TIE fighter. Um, yeah, so just nerd stuff and computer equipment and him there in the dark with big bags under his eyes. Uh, so that took me a few drawings to get 
to a point that I was happy with and I think I'm just about there. So I'll trace and paint that, that'll be the next one. Um, so yeah, when I have gotten commissions done, I'm usually happy with them. I'm happy with how, how they come out, but it's taking me ages to get to that point of getting the commission done. They're taking a lot more sort of rough drawings than they usually do. Um, and it's taking a lot for me to actually fucking drag myself to my desk to sit and draw and paint them and stuff. Um, so as I say, they are getting done. I've got a few more to do, get them out of the way. Should be able to chill for December and then uh, recharge a little. Because my idea of, of like a holiday is I just don't ever leave the house. <laughs> I still sit and draw and then hate myself if I don't draw. Uh, so I, I don't really take time off. Which, you know, partly is because I kind of, I have to keep drawing to keep making money, to keep living, basically. So it's not as easy as just, it'll take a holiday. But I just, I very rarely let myself, you know, relax or whatever. Um, I try to, but, you know, I'm always aware there's more drawings to do, there's more to be done. Um, so I beat myself up a little bit when I don't get stuff done as I think I should be. So when I can't even finish, you know, more than one piece a week, I get really like fucking angry at myself. Knowing there have been times where I've done like a commission a day and then in the same day do, you know, the rough sketch for another commission and maybe another couple of like little drawings. And, you know, that's a lot for one day. So I'm not expecting to do that every day. But when I can barely manage that in a week, it's like, ugh. Fuck, you know, I should be doing so much more than I currently am. Uh, and like I say, it's been an entire year almost of staying at home, living as an artist or whatever. Um, and I think it's just sort of not necessarily taking its toll, but like I need to... I guess that's something I need to learn how to do is sort of balance my time well enough that, you know, I, I don't necessarily burn out too hard. Because maybe I think that's all what, all it is essentially is, is uh, you know, just hitting a point of burnout. Um, anyway, I'll get through it. There's, I'm, not, I'm not worried. It's just at the moment I feel a bit like, ugh, it's all a bit much. But I know I'm going to get through it and... I'm excited to get Gun Viking done because I know once that's done, that's going to be like, that's been in the works for years on and off. So once I get like the full book out, I'm going to be so fucking glad to have that. I should be anyway. But of course, you know, the mental illness will make me feel like nothing's happened. I'll get the book, I'll get them sold and I'll be like, cool. Uh, now what? What's next? What, 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 what do I work on next? Ugh. But that's how it goes, so... But I will be glad to have it done. Um, as I've said, I've got other gun viking stories I want to do. Um, and and having that book finished will be a large... A big. It'll be a big sort of stepping stone, a milestone or whatever, in, in terms of getting shit done, so I'll be glad for that. <laughs> Uh, trailing off, it's it's trailing off tired you and I need to eat, I need to sleep. Um, I need some lo-fi hip-hop beats. Yeah. Lo-fi hip-hop beats to murder and what should the, the, the title be for this piece? Because it's got to have the lo-fi hip-hop part because that's just part of the thing but then like lo-fi hip-hop beats to what and what to to murder and relax to maybe that's it murder and relax it's quite funny lo-fi hip-hop beats to murder and relax to mm -hmm. 